So the Night City Wire fourth instalment not long ended and with it we got many new details on the game. The stream was dedicated mainly to vehicles and if you missed anything, I cover all you need to know right here, right now. How's it going guys, my name's DPJ and if you enjoyed the video leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe. Also guys to celebrate the release of Cyberpunk 2077, I am giving away copies of the game on all platforms. To be with a chance of winning one for yourself or a friend. Drop a like on this video and leave a comment down below. So within the fourth episode of Night City Wire, we saw new gameplay, heard about new things and got many new details surrounding vehicles, so let's get into it. So they started off the stream talking about the vehicles themselves and how there are many, many different kinds of vehicles as you would imagine. And wow guys, wow, it's beyond anything I thought. Check this out. In a huge open world like Night City, you need a chill ride to get around fast. And in Cyberpunk 2077, there are tons of cool vehicles to choose from. Get this, four liter engine, six cylinder, goes from zero to 103.2 seconds. You fucking believe that? We've crafted every car and motorbike with amazing attention to detail. On the chassis, the body, not to mention the interiors. You can expect everyone not only to look unique, but to deliver a unique driving experience. All right, show me what you got. Don't expect advanced tech or luxurious materials here. Nuh-uh. Yeah, it's not the size that counts, I guess. This class is mostly utility vehicles and low-end clunkers made for every pocket. Hold on, hold on. It's a wreck. My damn wreck. Well, definitely no guy or girl magnet. If you need to impress, look to this class alone. What you looking at? Tell me what you looking at. I'm putting my ride on the line. Either you match it in cash, or you can forget about the fight. With these wheels, no expense has been spared, no frill ignored. Their plush interiors decked out in all the latest tech, while you get to sit back and enjoy the ride. Masterful engineering and practical design. Trucks and tanks for when you need power and brute force. Hell of a machine. Neat beast. My pride and joy. And these monsters are literally unstoppable. These are for Chooms who love the smell of exhaust and the roar of street wildlife. Their powerful engines and exchangeable parts make them perfect for Timmy. Come on! I want to smell that choo-choo bird! Whether it's street racing, running from the NCPD, or just showing off in the streets, with these high-powered beasts, you will have only respect. Oh yeah! I like that! If you need speed and armor, the hypercar class is for you. It means precise bodywork, built-in LiDAR arrays, and really expensive materials. Imagine you're sitting on a pile of eddies. Probably less than a thousand people in the world can afford the Arendite. Not your typical urban vehicle. They will take you places you never dreamed you'd go. Oh, and original vehicles are not all you'll find in 2077. We also found room on our roster for some true automotive icons. Floor it, V. So how crazy does that look? Now I don't know if you missed it, but they said tuning was in the game, although we can't customize vehicles visually. It seems as though making a car quicker might be an option. So they go on to talk about the different classes of cars, details on expense, how they work, and what they represent, and how cars are all different. Check it out. Paul, thank you so much for joining us. I think it's fair to say we've come a really long way from Roach and the Witcher, so uh, there's a lot to talk about. Yep, there's a lot to talk about. What do you want to talk about? Well, let's start with the various classes of different cars, because in the video we saw there were things like economy and luxury vehicles, but can you tell us a bit more about their kind of design philosophy? Like what does each kind of class offer when people are driving them around Night City? Absolutely. Uh, depending on uh, the variation of the car that you're uh, either buying or stealing, depending on your flavor, uh, yeah, you'll notice that they don't just look different. 
uh, but they'll also drive different and feel different. If you're buying or stealing uh, a nice fancy looking sports color version of a car, you'll notice that it drives you know, faster, sounds a little bit more punchy and sportsy than, for example, a junkier version of that same car. You know, it can have solar panels tied to the roof or some other pipes that are hot wiring some other you know, cyberpunk components in your car. And uh, well, you know, if it looks cheap, it probably drives cheap too. So it seems that not only do the cars uh, look good on the outside, but there's an awful lot of detail on the inside as well. Things like the dashboard. So can you tell us more about that? Because I know if you find a Quadra Type 66 in the city, it's going to look totally different from the Quadra Type 66 that the gangs are driving out in the Badlands, both outside and inside. Yep, definitely. If you were about to steal a very nice high-end car, for example, uh, when you get in, you'll see the dashboard light up nicely, you'll see your dial indicators revving a little bit, but that may not exist for a junk version at all. It may have the dashboard ripped out completely. No matter what your flavor is, you'll, you'll find something that suits your needs. They then go on to talk about racing people, and it will be a feature as I think we all kind of guessed. And it does seem amazing, but it doesn't end there. They say you may just need a weapon. Check it out, guys. So what about racing then? Will there be racing? Because I know people have been asking. Yes, we're absolutely going to have several races in the game. Different locations, if you know you're going to be driving in the Badlands. Maybe bring a Nomad car, because it's just built through driving in the Badlands. But if you know you're going to be racing in Night City, just bring the hottest wheels you've got, because you're going to need all the power you can get. No matter where you're racing though, you need to bring a gun because this is Night City and you never know what's going to happen. They then go on to talk about collecting cars and how you can summon your car on the go. Pretty cool. Okay, so you talk about bringing cars then. Let's talk about like storing and calling cars because we know people can steal them. But what if somebody's found a car and they absolutely love this particular one? Is there a way for players to kind of build that collection? And then how do they actually, you know, summon them? Well, uh, summoning cars works pretty much the same as you would summon Roach in The Witcher 3. Your transportation may or may not show up on a roof somewhere, uh, but you know, we're still working on fixing some bugs here and there. But yeah, if there's a car that you really, really like very much, if you can't wait to own a Quadra or a Type 66, you'll get a message from your fixer and says, hey, I've got a Quadra for sale for you, you wanna buy it? All you have to do is drive over, pay the money and you've got your very own Quadra. Not to mention that every single vehicle that you buy, every single player vehicle is absolutely unique in every way. It's got a unique interior, unique exterior, paint job. Um, you know, it'll sound different, but it'll also handle different. Now then going to talk about the car I covered in yesterday's video. If you missed that, here it is. And here they are confirming the very car. Johnny Silverhand's Porsche. So in the video, we did mention there was space for a true automotive icon. Uh, do you want to reveal uh, what that actually is? Of course. Uh, the car in question here is uh, Johnny Silverhand's car. And Johnny Silverhand is, well, he's a big rocker boy and he needs some wheels to match. So we gave him a 911 Porsche from 1977, which means in 2077, Johnny's car is going to be exactly 100 years old. They then go on to showcase how this was put together in terms of sounds of the cars and how they made it happen. And the depth they went to is kind of like what you'd see in proper car games, much like Forza Motorsport. And the level of detail they actually went to is beyond what I thought they actually would. And it's actually crazy if I'm honest. And people, I love to see in that Fiesta. I mean, I'm a massive fan of Fords. I mean, I own an RS myself. It's like a rally car. And seeing that Fiesta was incredible, but here's my baby if you've never seen it before. They then showcased another partnership with Arch Motorcycles, which showcased some incredible bikes, people. And it also featured Keanu Reeves. But yeah, these Arch Motorcycles do look incredible, and I cannot wait to start collecting them and storing them. Next up, they showcased the different styles within Cyberpunk 2077. It's something I covered a little while back. It's actually one of the first videos I did, but it's cool to see them go into a little more depth on these styles. Check it out. Now it's time to talk about styles in Night City. Are you more kitsch or neo-militarism? Welcome to the brief authoritative history of Night City. This chapter is devoted to so-called styles. 
deeply linked with the history of the world and a very important aspect of life in the city. You can find them everywhere. In cars, clothes, guns, implants. They are your war paint. As one of our sponsors says, it matters not if you're dead, as long as you're doing it in style. The moves on this girl! Swoosh, swoosh! Slicing them up like sashimi! Four visual styles are evident in the Night City of 2077, each with its own history, status, and features. Neon hair, illuminated tattoos, and chrome. Function comes second. Looks are what matter. And we got another day ahead of us in this city of dreams. The fourth corporate war broke out and entropism was born. Vast and deep crises forced people to find ways to survive by any means. Getting the job done, no matter how, was the primary goal. The look? Who cares? I love this town. Love it like you might love a mother who popped you out on the steps of an orphanage once and now stops you to ask if you got a smoke for her. Fuck them. Fuck this job. Fuck this city. Deadly elegance without ostentation. Corporate militaristic fashion, mostly seen in the wealthier parts of town. Substance over style. That's the motto. Celebrities, brain dance stars, business magnates, heirs to corporate fortunes and corporate executives. They abandoned the cold, deadly elegance of neo-militarism and returned to the roots of kitsch, but gave it a fresh, new look. Oh shit, these hands. Sometimes it seems like I just brush something and sparks fly. Thank you for your attention. We wish you a very pleasant stay in our marvelous metropolis. Good luck and goodbye. NC's legends, know where you'll find most of them? The graveyard. Luckily matters not where you're from, matters not where you start. What matters here is the walk you walk. They ended the show just after showcasing some amazing cosplayers with something they're calling the diner. Check this out, people. So what do you want? Supercar? Big house? You want to rule this city? Well, you ain't getting anywhere without an upgrade. You need a softer touch, stronger spine, because taking over Night City ain't going to be easy. <laughs> Cyberpunk 2077. Now, you guys, this was just a recap of Night City Wire Episode 4. I'm going to go back over and break down every detail to see if I missed anything. So expect another video pretty soon if I find anything I feel you guys should know about. Now, if you want to check out the entire Night City Wire Episode 4, I will link it below as soon as it hits the internet. But yeah, guys, tell me what you think about what was seen today. If you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. And if you like what you see and want to see more Cyberpunk, be sure to subscribe. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.